Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Rajendra Roy, Chief Curator of Film here at the Museum of Modern Art. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this very special New Directors, New Films presentation presented with Film at Lincoln Center. Um, I want to thank Apple and everybody involved in Boys State being a part of this. This uh, was meant to be our opening night film. <laughs> so we're going to um, bring that energy and bring the the love we had for this project way back in March. Um, and it's been an incredible journey. I'm so, so thrilled to have Jesse Moss and Amanda McBain here with me, directors of the project. Um, and it's good to see you, Jesse. We go way back. I don't know if you <laughs> recall. I do, yeah. Speedo, maybe the Speedo. Speedo. Yeah, that was it. Century. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to exactly age ourselves that publicly, <laughs> but um, yeah, we were adult enough um, as of that 2004, 16 years ago, Yeah, have, have worked uh, early on in, in your career at least, but it's, it's a pleasure to have you both with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Well, we're, we're very honored to be selected uh, for the festival and um, opening night in spirit. Um, <laughs> it's, we're so happy to, to um, celebrate the festival and that you included Boy State. Thank you. Of course. And, and congrats um, on all the success you've had. I mean, Grand Jury Prize at Sundance. Um, and I think you, I mean, as, as of the recording of this Q&A, just won Critics' Choice Award, I think, last night for, for this. And I know there'll be a lot more coming. I mean, most important of all, I think, with, with the awards and the acclaim is that this story has gotten out. And, and my understanding is that it's really um, been embraced um, through the stream. And I, I guess I just first question, how are you both? How has this, this period been? And, and how are you feeling about getting this, this film out from... In a, in a much different way than may you may have anticipated when when we started out in Park City. We feel pretty good. I mean, honestly, we're lucky because we did get to premiere the film last January when the world was still the, the world, um, <laughs> the, world yeah. the way it used to work, uh, and that was an amazing experience. And all the boys came and their families and all of our families. And you know that I think since then we've had the chance though, because of this sort of online environment to really share the film with a lot of people. And that includes sort of, you know, anybody including college campuses, all of which we would not have done were, were we to be traveling in person. So I think there's some upside. Um, we've also been able to include all of our subjects and all of those conversations and they are in college so they normally wouldn't have been able to come all the time. So there's some goodness there. Um, I, I think it's also been a really, for us, a really healthy way to navigate this turbulence of the political world the last, well, since we started the project, but particularly leading up to the election of uh, just um, two weeks ago. So it's it's just been a healthy conversation for us. Um, I mean, I think the film is, is, you know, pretty honest about what we found at Boy State, but, but just to have a conversation about um, democratic participation, about polarization that's not talking about all that other stuff. Uh, it just felt like kind of healthy. Um, so it's, um, and now we're entering a new political environment. So sort of every chapter of this project has been um, a new landscape and that's been exciting. Yeah, no, I mean, I had anticipated, uh, whether it was myself or, or one of my colleagues on the selection committee for new directors, having this kind of conversation pre-election, right? Or in the, let's say the heat of um, the election cycle rather than on this side of it. I mean, who know, obviously the battle continues or different battles continue, but um, just digesting uh, the film in, in this new moment, uh, it does feel different. It, it does feel um, like a sense of some of the hope that's contained in your film um, was realized. I, I don't know if you you're able to feel any of that at this point yet or? It's really interesting to make a political film. It's the first film directly about politics that we've ever worked on. And of course, you're, the, the news cycle is constantly changing. Um, and so you're, you're reevaluating your film all through the making of it too, which is a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a stress. But I think particularly in this election year, you know, the closer we got to the election, to election day, the more sort of uh, amped up, I think our film felt in terms of kind of leadership style too. This that that's appear that appears in the film. So you really it does come down to this battle between kind of empathic leadership and win at all costs yeah. kind of strategy. Um, 
which is really interesting. I think now though, we're really looking at this film and, and how it also represents, you know, leadership, but also this kind of polarization, right? You have 75 million people who voted for one person and 70 million people who voted for the other. So that tribalism, that's definitely something our film investigates is still uh, unfortunately very present and probably will be for a little bit. I mean, we were contemplating a different electoral outcome and how we would feel about the film. And, and I think there is some kind of, I'll say it vindication or, or sort of hopefulness <laughs> in, the, in the outcome of the election. I think we're all, um, I mean, we were nursing Stevens defeat at Boys State. We certainly believed he would win and hoped he would win. And I think we recognize that um, his life has been a struggle and he'll he'll keep fighting politically and he has since we wrapped production on Boys State. And and I think um, we were hoping for a positive outcome electorally and, and we got that. But I think we also recognize that those divisions that were stirred up, that were fomented, um, not that we were naive, but they're very much here to stay. And I think we're grappling with that. And I think that's hopefully the value of the film now post-election is that it really holds up a mirror to our deep and intractable divisions and sort of helps us think about a way forward. Um, because, I mean, that's the reality that our, our president-elect is going to confront. He needs to find a way to work with people who disagree with him. And I think that's the space we were excited to explore at Boys State and with someone like Stephen Garza. Yeah. And, and well, so thank you for bringing up Stephen. So I, I, I'm sure it's an inevitable question for, for you both, but um, just the follow on and, and specifically now, like, have you been able to speak to Stephen and or Ben and, and certainly Renee, who emerges as, as the, the superhero star of this film in a way? But have you gotten their thoughts on, you know, both the process of, of putting out the film, um, discussing it, but then now kind of seeing the fruits of this election cycle and in, in the, what these young leaders are, are thinking about and doing? We have had a, a, a long, they, they all participated in watching the rough cut and then they were with us at Sundance and then they were with us sort of through the year. Um, and we've kind of been in conversation with them through this year and all its up and downs are also 20. So they're like shape shifting sort of in ways that are really fascinating and wonderful and natural to that age. Um, I think that uh, all of them, well, Ben in particular has had the most sort of interesting journey this year with this film. I think he's the mm -hmm. one kid who did not really go through a kind of transformation at moral transformation at Boy State uh, itself, but then in watching this film and sharing this film and talking uh, a lot with the other uh, kids in the um, film, I think he's really come to real see his own actions in a new way. And um, in a way that also the country is two years further now into this vulnerable place. And he's such a deep patriot that he recognizes that that kind of behavior, their dirty tricks, everything else, really is harmful to the body politic. And I think that's something he's super concerned about. And so it was really interesting to watch him in the lead up to this election, get very invested in, um, in the right person winning um, and in the right way. Um, and uh, uh, they've all um, found ways to continue to be engaged. Um, I mean, we see the reason we chose them is they were so attuned to what was happening in the country. They, they, they throw themselves into the process. We love that about them. They've all found very different paths. You know, we think of Boy State and Girl State as these launch pads into electoral politics for people like Bill Clinton and Dick Cheney. But, and that's been true for Stephen. He worked on Wendy Davis's campaign for Congress. Unfortunately, she lost in, in Austin. Uh, it was a close race. Um, we know Texas was a really a surprise and Stephen's really grappling with that. You know, the electorate was not, first of all, the state didn't flip blue. Uh, maybe that was um, happened elsewhere, but not in Texas. And, and um, so he's nursing those wounds. He said he's never worked on a winning campaign. He's worked on five. And I, I think one day he'll get there. But, um, but you know, Renee had a fascinating um, op-ed in the New York Times about his own journey, which is not I think he's not been, he's not thrown himself into electoral politics, but rather in, into activism and racial justice in his community. He's very focused locally and he's felt like that's where his voice needs to be. Uh, and uh, that's really remarkable to see sort of their own respective paths have been, have been very different. 
and and I do think a lot of us are are looking at the you know Gen Z or Zoomers or whatever and they end up being called, and and really admiring if being a bit bewildered by this impulse to to deconstruct hierarchies right and to look through anti racist lenses at the structures that exist and and I could fully imagine that someone like Rene with his intelligence and drive could come up with systems of governance, self-governance, self-policing, all those kinds of things that we so desperately need that people of our generation, you know, um, we, as much as we have fought to change and illuminate, we're still stuck in a in an analog <laughs> kind yeah. of like this plus that equals that um, set. And, and I think there, it's for many of us, I think watching this film, it was a great source of encouragement. Um, you know, I, I, I'm wondering if you could just talk a little bit about this, um, you know, storytelling and, and how clear it is now that politics is storytelling, right? And, and if, if it wasn't clear before, it certainly is clear now where you have just literally anything being made up and being told as, as truth, as, as part of a narrative about your identity as it relates to your politics um, and it being kind of really laid bare in this moment. And, you know, Jesse, I know you you have actually a, a literal background in, in politics and you translate the, that into st storytelling. Amanda, I'm not quite sure if you have similar backgrounds on that front, but just talk about how, how viscerally apparent this idea of um, storytelling as it relates to the, you know, to political action at this point or political activity. <laughs> That's, that's a great question. I'm actually, as you were talking, was thinking about Robert McDougall in our film. And, you know, when we were casting the movie and we were traveling all over Texas trying to find boys to focus on, Robert, I remember, was um, uh, had paged in the U.S. Senate and he was talking about the experience where he had watched senators from the two different parties stand up and basically present alternative versions of facts, you know, and he was kind of processing this is an, a, a, an instance of this kind of division and sort of post-truth reality that we're trying to negotiate. And what's so interesting now is to look at Robert's journey through Boy State, because he, of course, tells one story to the electorate that's very different than the private story that he tells us and himself about what he stands for. You know, he lies about his politics. And um, it's nice to see Robert sort of mature in the film painfully. So. Um, so um, I think Stephen, on the other hand, you know, we so deeply connected with because he seems so firmly rooted in his own sort of personal lived experience, the child of an undocumented mother who's the first in his family to go to, to graduate from high school and to, to go on to college. And um, sort of his lived experience is his political narrative. Um, but he's also able to sort of reach beyond that and find the language to connect with these young men around that issue of unity. You know, he, he invokes secession, of course, in that transformative moment where he gives that big speech. And I think that, that I mean, having worked in politics, as you mentioned, way back in a, in a previous life, I'm struck that Stephen Garza has an ability to connect with people that I didn't see in people I met on Capitol Hill. I mean, that is a gift that you're born with. I think we watch him discover that gift. I'm not sure he knew he had it when we first met him. You know, he is humble and quiet and he surprised us as I think he surprises you. So that was beautiful to see how that kind of rhetoric when harnessed to goodness can really bring people together. And I think that's one thing in all the dirty tricks and darkness that we see at Boys State, it's really something that made us very hopeful and optimistic. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, another thing that uh, has been really important and I, I don't think we would have seen it unless we were on this other side of this cycle is this um, false notion clearly that um, any one community is monolithic, right? And certainly the Latino community in, in Texas um, at this point, we understand, but you know, also black and, and Asian communities. And I do think you know, there, there is something authentic to representation and all of us who see ourselves um, in, in Kamala in, in particular, you know, like, but it's, it's very, uh, you know, she's been pulled in a lot of different ways in the same way that Barack was kind of pulled in different ways. Like, I see, you know, my nieces who are black and South Asian and, and pick up on that and someone else will see something totally different. But maybe you could just talk a little bit about um, this idea of, of dismantling the idea that, you know, identity politics uh, are, are essential or that, you know, any one 
um, look at someone will give you a read on who they are. I, on the subway, I was reading this um, article about Lieutenant Governor uh, Fetterman in, in um, I think that's his name, in, in Pennsylvania, who if you just read him by his look, you would think, <laughs> oh, well, you know, come on, this is a MAGA, you know, maniac and, and quite the opposite. So yeah. I think, you know, again, that's something your film really helps with. Well, one of the, I think, very apparent um, facts of our film is that both Renee and Stephen are one of the few uh, people of color in this sea of majority uh, white, but also majority conservative Texans. The program is very old fashioned in some ways and, and they're trying to change, but they definitely still draw a lot uh, from small rural communities and it's, um, just been that way for a while uh, and they're gender segregated. And there's a lot of old fashioned stuff that eventually hopefully is moving in the direction of better representation. But um, one of the big, wonderful, profound surprises for me was not so much that Stephen and Renee were smart and did well and worked hard. I mean, they, we knew they were brilliant, like from the second that we met them. I mean, we didn't quite know that Stephen could give a big speech like that. You know, there were certain surprises to there, but, um, the, 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 the revelation for me was really, or the reminder, I guess, maybe, was that once they started doing their thing, this group that was so different from them started to respond, right? And that's really Robert's lesson too, frankly. He re recognizes that playing to the cheap seats, to, you know, throwing red meat, whatever you think these people want, in fact, is not what they responded to the most. They responded to uh, Stephen's kind of choose unity, but sort of what's natural to him in this kind of, he is an empathic person, he's not faking that. That is just truly the goldness of who he is. Now, Renee has a different path, right? He's doing all kinds of incredible stuff and he gets the sort of, you know, the kind of more racist sort of like, wait, you're, you don't- Challenges to his legitimacy. Challenges to his, all that stuff that we, I expected to see, right? In this environment. So it's a really interesting tension between these two things and what, yeah, what represent what what we can hope or also fear about, you know, better representation in leadership positions. Um, I think that's a real high wire act too. Yeah. That both of them have to walk to hold on to the principles um, that are sort of core to who they are, <clears throat> but find a way to, <clears throat> to 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 harness a majority. I mean, that's what they need to win, right? And um, they have to do have to kind of sublimate. Stephen, perhaps more successfully, sublimate part of themselves in, in that political journey that they're on. And I think for us to, to watch that high wire act um, and to, to understand that, the, you know, that is the national struggle that we're engaged into. You know, there's activism and there's politics and sort of harnessing that activist spirit, but, but holding on to the levers of power and representation so you can actually make the, the change that you want it, it is a difficult process. And I think that to discover beyond the sort of superficial appearance of Boy State, you can get a kind of complex representation of what that journey is like um, today. And, and uh, speaking of complexity, uh, you know, your work, both of your work has always kind of, for me, laid bare the, the fallacy of this idea that when you're telling stories or translating people's lives that happen to be based in the heartland, or you know, are not um, you know, let's say in in the the you're grounded in an urban centric view, right? You, you, that you don't have to tell those stories in an exploitative way, right? They don't have to be the freak show Tiger King experience. They can actually be sensitive portraits, and and also that no one is interested in telling those stories. I mean, you you both have been telling those stories for a while now. Um, I guess just talk to us a little bit about, you know, finding those connections. Um, you, you have a whole career now of, of, you know, working outside the areas that, you know, one might expect, let's say, um, and, and doing that with, with a lot of respect and, and a lot of clear admiration for your collaborators. Yeah, th thank you. I think there's a little, bit of, a little bit of that in Speedo too. I mean, that was a lot closer to home and that we shot it on Long Island, but it really was a, a different culture and um, a different community than we were used to. And, and I think that for us making that journey as documentary storytellers is really where we've been drawn, I think, not so much by design, but almost like um, impulse, um, a sort of a gravitational pull. And I think that, you know, we see that in Texas, there's a sort of 
radical otherness of people saying, you know, our masculinity will not be infringed and invoking, you know, Second Amendment rights and sort of the extremism. But I think that the nuance that we found in people like Ben and, and Robert was that that complexity that it's always interesting to us that, that, that they're sort of, and we saw that in, in Pastor Jay and the Overnighters, just the sort of layers beneath the surface. And I think that's really where the interesting documentary storytelling is. I mean, finding characters who are kind of confident but vulnerable um, and who sort of balance those contradictions and are comfortable with the cameras, with our attention, uh, who are trusting to us and reveal themselves. Um, ben, you know, he's a mass of contradictions. We don't agree politically. He's got that Ronald Reagan doll in the bookshelf. I grew up in a house, my mother cursing Ronald Reagan, um, you know, fighting his policies in Central America. <laughs> but but Ben, you know, he he's, we really, and we, it's been fascinating, sort of wonderful to watch his moral awakening that Amanda talked about, but he is a complicated kid. And I'm not sure our film can even do justice. You know, we have an ensemble piece and so, all these guys get, you know, 25% of screen time, but 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 they are still hopefully infinitely complicated. Yeah, I mean, what's so interesting to me is that a little bit of like um, Stephen's campaign style, which is like a listening tour kind of thing, is is a lot of what we do. I mean, I think one of the reasons we we're drawn to this space at Boy State was that there are so few spaces where people with radically different politics have to get into a room and talk to each other and work something out, even if it is, um, you know. Banning cargo shorts. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those spaces are so few and that, that overlap of sort of like, I'm gonna try and listen to you and you're gonna try and listen to me. That seems like, that's just where we like to be. I mean, it is uncomfortable 100% of the time, maybe 99% of the time. So I think, you know, that's not for everybody, but that's like somewhere where I learned to question my own assumptions, uh, my own fears, my own politics, my own everything. And I think that's for me really important in my creative process, our creative process. Um, that's not to say that Stephen or Amanda or Jesse believes that, you know, compromise or common ground is gonna be found with everybody. There are certain, place, there's certain lines that Steve in, partic in particular will not cross. And I think that's also kind of interesting, right? Like I'm not gonna find common ground most likely with QAnon, right? So that's not what I'm talking about, this sort of way over here. So I'm talking about who, who else is left and, and, and what happens when you get to know them personally. Yeah, no, and I, look, that, that youthful exploration and, and also like steadfastness in a belief that you know in like five minutes is gonna depart. Like I, I was raised in a, in a household, that, a very politically active household. We were so liberal. We, uh, my dad in particular, thought that Jimmy Carter was too right wing and we campaigned very heavily for Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> right. And so like and, and then obviously, you know, things shifted in the Reagan years, uh, put that all aside. But there was a journey. And I think that that's, you know, particularly with Ben, you know, I, I do think of all the care. I'm, obviously, we're all expecting to see Renee in very short order. And, you know, I'm sure Stephen will do well. But to, to follow where Ben ends up will be just fascinating because um, actually I, I have no no belief he'll land where he is now that he'll continue to grow any and so my last question is it just about like what's next i mean i know you know it's not about retread but do you have any plans to stay in touch with these guys and you know how or you know are they interested in kind of perpetuating um this moment for themselves in a way i mean um obviously people these age are much more savvy about um, that than than say we were at that age um and where are they going to go next kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's been great. I think the film has given them a platform to be themselves. We sort of get out of the way um, <laughs> because they are extraordinary and different. Um, and particularly, I think Steve and Renee also have seized the moment. Robert's, you know, he's cloistered at West Point and kind ah. of living a different reality. Ben is, is, as he says in the film, really interested in national security issues. And I think he'll, he'll go that path. And um, so I think that they, they, it's been it's been nice to to see the the limelight to these to these guys and and let them, as we know, young people are leading political movements around the world. They they are providing a kind of moral um, courage that we sometimes lack with our adult leadership, and th they're they're ready to step up and and, and lead, and they're going to do that. Um, so that's exciting. I mean, it, I think for us. Um, 
you know, we loved exploring boyhood too in this moment um, through Boy State and seeing in this film and this story really two different versions of being a, a man or, a, a, you know, one embodied by Ben, who's sort of the politics of strength and Stephen's politics of empathy sort of clashing. I think for us, us next, we'd like to explore girl state and girlhood. Um, and that's a project we're actively developing. And we, we're, we have our eye on a couple of states that have really interesting girl state programs. So it's not going to be Texas. No. <laughs> um, and hopefully one day people state, you know, as Stephen says, what about people state? I think we'd all like to see the program move to better re reflect um, the political reality of our country. But um, we think there's a really interesting conversation to be had with young women who are negotiating these political choices and coming of age in this political moment and sort of exploring division and polarization through their eyes too. We, you know, this is only half the story. Wonderful. Well, that's um, thrilling news. <laughs> and uh, certainly I'll be, I'll be watching eagerly and, and just wanna thank you both again for your dedication to this for sticking with um, all of us, all of our audiences who um, both knew about this film earlier on and had to wait a little bit to get it out and, and those who are discovering it now. Thank you for that um, and uh, stay safe. Thanks Raj, Thank thanks so much. much. Great to see you again. Take care, Take care. thanks so much.